Hey guys, so in this video we are going to answer a question, subscriber question and the question in question was Frederick, what considerations do I need to make when I start a fintech company? So let's get into it. So this is a very big question. It's a uh, I can really only give you the sort of considerations that I've made myself or the stuff that I think is relevant since I actually I work for a fintech company. And well, well, we will start with the basics, like the absolute more bare bone basics of, star of starting and founding your own startup. Then you're going to have to make these considerations regardless of it's a fintech company or not. So the first and foremost thing is that you need the idea, like the concept. You need to have a clear understanding of the problem that you are solving and the business value of that problem. Because, I mean, let's be honest here, everybody has an idea. If you spit it, I, I can trust you guys, trust me when I say this, guys, there is a million entrepreneurs out there in the world who have an idea and can never actually get it off the ground. So when it comes to startups in general, most of them fail, and they fail because the of reasons there's tons of stuff that we should still keep on I, I think i believe in small businesses and i think that it it is the we have to have it this way we have to have people to produce these new ideas and push the innovation as much as humanly possible but it is very important that the first thing you do is to have a clear understanding of the feasibility of your idea because just having the idea is one thing but investing money and time and all that other stuff that comes after it i mean everything is simple and when it's just in theory when you have to execute on it that's when it gets tricky so first and foremost make sure that you have a really clear understanding of the problem that you are solving and then the second step is validate your idea before you even write it if before you even write a single goddamn line of code validate the idea and that means getting like designs or con uh, some types of concepts artboards or something like that if it's a visual thing otherwise you can skip this step but if it's a visual thing you need to get designs and artboards and all that good stuff and do pen like basic research like the basic stuff you have to understand who is your target audience who is your consumer who are your stakeholders all of this good stuff you need to talk to them, you need to have real conversation, try to understand the business, like the people that you are going to solve this problem for or your idea is built on, and validate the solidity of your concept. Your, that, because without that, you, the whole thing falls to shit, and it's usually going to fall to shit after you've already invested time and energy and money into it, and if you're really unlucky, you might actually end up in debt because you didn't do this properly before you started doing and started working right. So that's number two. Three is to make a proof of concept. You need to make a some small proof of concept that captures the core features of what it is that you want to achieve. If you if your plan is to build like something of the scale of Facebook or Instagram on your first try, you can just forget that immediately. You're not going to have the time, the money, or the resources to like. There's no way you're going to do that. It, it, you have to let go of this concept that. Uh, the, I mean, if, you're, if you try to, on your first go, to make a luxury product, either your product is going to have to be so amazingly well-branded and microscopic in features and like just size in general for you to be able to invest that amount of time and energy into the design, or you're going to have to let some stuff go. And that's usually how it goes. I mean... It's uh, smaller companies cannot afford the same quality assurance process that Google has and Facebook has. And we live in this weird world. I'm sorry to say we live in this weird world where some people seem to believe that the standard and the default should be that level of quality. And I'm sorry to say it's not. It's not feasible. You have, we have, and I think that these massive super companies, I mean, that plays very well into their hands because if every single person out there in the world believe that the, the basic features or the basic quality of an application should be at the size of Google, well, that suits them very well because nobody else can compete with that or very few people can. So that's number three. Make sure that you have like a proof of concept of some sort. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to work because what you're going for in the beginning are so-called early adopters. And an early adopter is simply a person who is willing to, like you're solving the problem that they have and they are willing to accept that you have bugs. They are willing to accept that your UI isn't perfect or whatever you're building because you're solving a problem for them. They are okay with that. They are the first people you want to impress and those are the people you really want to invest in. 
So these are the bare bone basics. Once this has been done and you have a proof of concept that some people actually see a value in, you're going to have to look into incubator, incubator pro and programs, things of this nature, because you're going to need funding. You're going to need money unless you're going to be self-funded, which is another possibility if you want that. It's very likely that you're going to have to make at least some meaningful business context, because especially if you're working B2B or like you're business to business, it's imperative for you to make net, like network as much as possible, because a lot of companies, I mean, if you can sell them a, an ID and make a really good pitch, and get into like get into a meaningful boardroom within their organization. Once you're in, it's likely that you're going to stay in, and that that you know you might actually have an early partner that is going to fund you just to develop the idea on their behalf, and then you can of course have it in the deal that they may have some type of exclusive rights to this project until a certain criteria is met, and then you can actually open and open it up, and that's a very nice accelerator for your business. So let's talk about the, because this is the basics, this, this is true for absolutely every single startup. The thing that's going to happen afterwards, if we're talking about fintech, pro, uh, fintech specific things that you need to consider is number one, security. Security is the most important thing that you're going to face in the fintech world. It, the, the banking industry and I, people are not okay with you messing up with their money. If you think they're pissed off of, by Google sharing their personal in, information, can you imagine what's going to happen if you leak their transaction information or if you lose their money somehow? That's a much bigger deal to people than just having their emails leaked somewhere in general. So you need to be really good with, uh, with security in general because trust me, the banking world and all the different partners that you're going to have to communicate with, the card, card companies so forth, they are not okay with fuck-ups in this, in this area. So security, number one. Second thing that you need to be really, really good at is going to be integrations you are going to do a lot of them. You are going to integrate to a lot of different platforms because in order to provide some value, you're going to have to integrate to banking system, grab credit card information, transaction information, all of this good stuff. So good being a, having a good understanding of API design, network security as kind of touches on this as well, and how to scale a, pro, a project, an application, that is going to face very like a lot of different custom integrations is a very good strategy and then of course once you're big enough and you can start making some demands on of yourself from you know from your company's perspective looking into how to actually standardize these apis is a very good idea a good a company to kind of follow suit for when it comes to api design is stripe uh, the payment provider system it's a very good like a, a good startup to to kind of model a, a lot of stuff after they have a pretty good uh, company, a fairly good understanding of this, of this problem and has solved it in a very fairly nice way. So what I want you to take away from this is, to, is basically that uh, when you're starting your own fintech, the thing that you should first and foremost consider is the process of taking your idea, like making sure that it is a solid idea from that state and then go into validating your idea, doing like basic user testing before you even start writing code and then making a proof of concept that you can showcase somehow so that your core idea is captured and get some early adopters, some testers who are going to validate that this is actually useful to them. And then you go and find yourself either a business partner or a company who is willing to invest or an incubator program or something like that, accelerator programs. There's tons of these out there that gives you some funding and then you take it from there. When it's uh, the stuff that is fintech specific is going to be security. You have to have a very good understanding of good security practices because you fuck ups in this fuck ups in this area is not tolerable. It's not tolerated at all. Pretty much, your entire company can go over if you have a severe leak or a, you get hacked or something like that. And lastly, make damn sure that you're good at uh, integrations. API integrations that you understand how to write good APIs, how to integrate to really shitty ones and have that scale. That is going to help you a lot. A good tip is to have um, a look at the, the PSD2 standard, the open banking protocol that is, well, that standard that has been fairly recently established. Because if you're going into that area of fintech, you're likely going to have that as a very common integration to make. But you're also going to face a co quite a lot of absolutely <clears throat> horrendous integrations to different entities within the finance industry. But 
if you know how, what you're doing and you have a good understanding of integrations, it's actually not that much of a hassle. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Have a great day.